Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. Now in this one I'll be showing you guys, uh, well kind of going through how I made this nice macro pad. So this is running a QMK and you can download the source code from here. I'll leave a link down to this in the description below if you want to try it out. And so since this can be kind of like a build overview, um, I'll go into the code later on or in another video. So yeah, initially this started off as a hard drive <laughs> cage. Oh yeah, so I suppose I should actually show you the macro pad here as well. So yeah, this is how it looks like. So as you can see, nothing like fancy, nothing too pretty, but very functional. So this is how it looks like. I'll just leave it here, sure. So yeah, anyway, with this build, you won't need like a 3D printer, you won't need a CNC machine. It's all like hand wired and everything. <laughs> so yeah, it started off as this thing here. <laughs> so normally the hard drive would like slide into here. And I'll just move this a little bit, oops. Out of the way here, all right. So yeah, then on the back, as you can see, there's like a small ridge. So this is why if you look at it from this angle, the buttons in the middle are like slightly higher, but like it's no problem when you're using it. So what I did was I just like used the Dremel tool and then just like cut the holes here. So Dremel is just like the kind of spinning drill with the small disc. <laughs> I just kept cutting and then I just like I had a template here as you can see so I just got that from the by measuring uh, the numpad on the, my other keyboard and then I drilled them all nicely or cut them out and then I started putting the switches in so for this build I just used uh, Cherry MX Blues because I have like a load of them <laughs> Well, not anymore, not after this build, but I had like a nexus of Cherry Mix Blues that I used here. And then I hot glued the switches in, because um, otherwise they just fall out. <laughs> and then after I finished all that, this is how it looks like, with like a more traditional keypad, uh, numpad, numbers or keys or whatever, instead of like this mess. <laughs> So yeah, this is how it looks like underneath after all the hot glue is done. So then after that, on each leg of the switch, so as you can see here, you have two legs here, so one here and one here. And basically when you press the switch, electricity can flow through. But for QMK software to work, uh, or for QMK firmware to work, it expects you to have uh, diodes. That way you can do stuff like N key rollover and that kind of thing. So yeah, just um, solder one leg of the diode, make sure the diode is like pointing in one direction. You don't want like this diode pointing this way and this diode pointing that way. So you just wanna connect them up like this and then, F and then connect each um, diode like together. So as you can see here, we have like a straight connection going across over to here. And then you would do the same for every row basically. Like so. Now here it got a little bit messy, but as you can still see, each diode is still connected to one leg. And then the other connection, they're all like connected after the diode itself. <laughs> And then there's more angles of how it looks like so you can get a better idea. And then for every connection here, I just soldered on an extra wire because this will be going into the Arduino Pro Micro. And these are basically our rows. So we soldered the rows here, looks like this, and has like nice plugs here to plug it in. And then what I did, is I used electrical tape to cover up all the connections here. And then for the columns, 
I just grabbed a wire and then I stripped. So basically I grabbed one of these and then I stripped the, uh, oops. I stripped the plastic parts. And so you're left with like a giant copper strand and I soldered them to the other leg. So one leg is going to the rows and then the other leg is going to the columns. So you just like put a dab of solder on each point. And then for, for the last bit, I just like stretched it out over here. So yeah, that's, you can see it here being stretched out. And then I did the same for the other four columns, like so. And then I was thinking where to position the, <laughs> or, or the Pro Micro. And for the time being, I just left it kind of hanging. So here you can see all the columns, they go into uh, the four pins on the micro, and then the five rows, they go into another five pins. So it looks like this, and then I had glued the Pro Micro in place here. So that's how it is here. And then I uh, colored the hot glue uh, with the black Sharpie because um, I didn't really like the look of white, like when the hot glue dries, it's white. So I didn't really like the look of that. So I just went over with the Sharpie. And so, yeah, that's kind of what the build is. So it's fairly cheap, like, uh, for the components. So you just pick anything you want for the case. Um, I recommend like something metal because it makes like a nice sound when you type. Um, so yeah, apart from that, you would need a Arduino Pro Micro. These are like, I don't know, eight euros on eBay. And you would need the uh, wires. You can find them fairly cheap. You would need the diodes. They usually like come in the pack for like, I don't know, five euros or something, get like around a hundred diodes or whatever. <laughs> so that's plenty. And then you'll also need like hot glue. You'll need a uh, soldering iron because um, you, you need to make sure the connections are fairly secure. You can't just like twist the wires around the pins. They won't stay for long. And then I suppose the most expensive part about this is uh, the switches themselves. Um, so these are Cherry Max Blues. They normally go for like 10 euro per 10 switches and uh, since here it's just a little bit over 20 or just a little bit over 10 switches so you would spend like say 20 euro on switches and then keycaps you could just pull them off any random keyboard um all right so thanks for watching and bye bye